Well, good evening, everybody. It is Sunday evening. Sorry for the slight delay. Um, Facebook helping me out again tonight. As soon as I hit video start, it said, oh, can't connect. So I think we're good now. This is Mary from Stamps and Lingers, and we are going to make a fun little card today. One of the, this is actually one of my favorite. It's a fun fold, even though it doesn't look like it. Um, but it is one of my favorites because it's very, very easy to do. And yet it looks like you just are a genius. Hey, Jean. Hey, Paula. Glad that you could join me tonight. So this is the card that I gave you the sneak peek of. Hi, Karen. Hi, Mary. Glad you could join. Hey, Donna. Um, maybe we'll wait one second and do all of our initial hey, hellos. I'm glad you could join. Hey, Amy, how are you? I'm kind of surprised you're still awake, to be honest. Hi, Jean. Nice of you to join me tonight. I appreciate y'all spending part of your weekend with me. So, anyway, this is... Hi, Karen. Hey, Jean. This is the uh, card I gave you the sneak peek of this morning. It looks pretty regular, pretty easy. Works in this perfectly normal A2 card envelope, I mean. And it uses this beautiful waterfront stamp set. Everybody stop a moment and say a little prayer that this makes it into the annual catalog because I am loving this stamp set. Okay, that'll be enough. Anyway, why is this a special card? We'll take a look-see. When you open it up, it doesn't open regular. It is an easel card. Can y'all see that? So... It has a front sentiment, and it has an inside liner and sentiment, and all stamped with the beautiful waterfront set. And this is very simple. It is really a matter of making one extra score line and fold on the front of your card and making yourself an easel stop. That's what this little panel is called in Mary's world. It's an easel stop. All right, so let us get started. Yes, isn't this fun? I love these kinds of cards. I, they're one of my favorites, and I, to be quite honest, have no idea why I don't do them more frequently. All right, so let us set this aside and get going. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put this so that I can kind of see it here. So just one hot second, just so I can make sure that I'm kind of recreating it. The fun thing about the waterfront stamp set is that you can make just all sorts of fun uh, little scenes, right? It's kind of cool. All right. <clears throat> so to begin, let's go ahead and get our card base ready. This is a normal size piece of early espresso. Um, hey, Susan, glad you could join. Happy to see you. And uh, hey, Phil, you're right, Phyllis, it is absolutely wonderful. Um, it, I hope it makes it to the next catalog. Sue, you're about to learn the big secret to an easel card. Now, I like to use my Simply Scored tool for this. And all you're going to do, this is regular four and a quarter by 11. You make your first score at five and a half, just like it was a regular old card. Okay, and then you make your second score at eight and three eighths. Okay, so five and a half and eight and three eighths. And like usual, this will all be on the blog tomorrow, so you can get your directions from there. And that is all we need our Simply Scored board for, so I'm going to put it out the way. And we'll go ahead and fold this. And then this, uh, the second fold folds the opposite direction. All right. And all that remains is to do um, a little bit of fancy gluing with our card front, and we'll have an easel card. So we'll set this aside for right now and get into the pretty stuff, the fun stuff. All right. Now. We've got several pieces sitting here ready to rock. I have double matted the front and the inner liner and the easel stop. Okay, okay, and the sentiment. Because sometimes I just like a double mat. And in this case, I've used um, Always Artichoke and So Saffron. And I think that 
is really one of the prettiest color combinations going. Hi, Lenny. Hey, Julie, glad you made it. Um, appreciate that very much. Hey, Sarah, nice of you to join. So anyway, we've got um, Always Artichoke and So Saffron, and I'll just go ahead and give those a quick adhere. This is We're gonna make the card front to start with. I'm just gonna fast fuse them together. All right. You guys have the Oscars playing in the background? Or are you one of those people who is boycotting the uh, Oscars? I'm not boycotting the Oscars. I'm, I'm going to watch it in the dark of night and hide my shame. But I am going to watch. All right. Now, the card front is a piece of Wood Textures DSP. And we will go ahead and get that fast fused on. No, you know what? I think we'll hedge our bets just a little bit, because, you know, I never make a mistake, ever, ever, ever make a mistake. Hi, Kathy. Hey, Brooke. Glad you could join. But about the time I say I never make a mistake, I will absolutely make a mistake. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp some of the trees. Potentially my favorite image in this entire stamp set, which is filled with my favorite images. And what I'm going to do is do a bit of a dry fit first so that I can see where I want my trees. So I know that I'm going to put my layered artwork in the center here. I, I kind of put the artwork roughly where the easel portion folds. So it's rough. It's rough, I know. But it's kind of a, it's a swag. It's a swag. And I'm using my squishy mat. And I'm going to, I'm going to stamp these. Hey, Pam. I'm going to stamp these in Always Artichoke. Amy, I know this is your favoriteest color ever. I think I got something on there. Hang on. Make sure I don't. Okay. And so I'm going to put these right about there. And just kind of move that out the way. And give that a good stamp. And I think I'll do it twice. And then I'll put it back and kind of get an idea where I want my bottom trees to go. About there looks pretty good. And one more. Okay. So we have a little grove of trees. And I'll put this, set that aside, give this a quick quick wipe just to be sure I don't have any ink anywhere and shake it a little bit hey Carol Finn says hello he's he's mumbling in his sleep right now hey Stacy and Pam hope y'all are having a good good evening and that's got a little dab so I'm just gonna give that little dab with my paper towel just to be sure it's dry okay we'll set this aside for a second and fast fuse that onto the double mats. All right. I watch the Oscars just because it's kind of fun sometimes. I And then I, I watch it DVR'd because that way I can fast forward when somebody wants to get stupid and pretend like they know anything about politics. Okay. Come on, fast views. Don't, don't mess with me now. Jeez. Okay. I'm holding my mouth just right, so I can't really talk. Okay. All right, there we go. We'll turn that over and give it a little burnish. You'll see I've done a little uh, cardstock saving by taking my, this, mat right out of the middle there that's all that is okay now this is ready so we will set that aside and let us make our art panel all right so i'm going to use a couple of the images hey denise um hi ann how are you all right we're going to start with some ground and i'm going to use old or always artichoke to start with and I discovered this in my couple of trials with this stamp set. Um, 
I found out, I decided it was easiest to make the ground and then stamp the mountains in the center of the ground, with the ground already there. That way things kind of lined up. So we're going to put it right about, head in the way, sorry, right about there, like that. We'll keep that so that I can use it again, and then we'll pull out my mountains. Now this doesn't look like mountains. It looks a lot like a blobby swathies thing, but it's a mountain based on how you color it, right? You make it a mountain by making it crumb cake. Hi, Sue. I'm glad you're here too. Yeah, Julie, this I mean, the, these the stamp set and the wood textures DSP are just like meant to go together, right? They're absolutely meant to go together. Okay, so I've inked up with some crumb cake, and oh, and I used the wrong stamp. I was like, man, that's really huge, huge. That's huge. So let's use the right one. What do you think about that? Let's do that. And you know how I should have known it was right because it's all purple. Yeah. Because I first thought I was going to make this with rich razzleberry mountains. But that didn't work out so good. Okay, let's try that at Dan. How about we try that at Dan? So I'm just going to line the bottom of the mountain up with the ground. And we'll put it right about there. Give it a good squish. Hi, Sharon. Glad you could join. So you're going to want to ink this up just as soon as you see how this card turns out. And we got a little bit of a misshape there, so I'm gonna give it another little push. I'm gonna pull it back where I can see it just a little better so I can line it up. And if it doesn't line up perfectly, it's mountains in the mist, in the distance. Okay, that'll be close enough. And we'll do it again. And you can see that that little indentation of the ground happens to be perfect for that promontory, like how I used that word. So we'll just go ahead and put the second like that. And I think that'll be close enough. We'll stamp it again, because I can. There we go. All right. So there is our Montens. And now, with some old olive, yeah, it, you're right, Sharon. It kind of is a sleeper. When I first saw it, I thought, oh my God, I love this stamp set. And then it's taken me a minute to use it, and I don't, I don't actually know why. So I'm just going to take these trees, and I'm going to stamp them right about there. Okay. And finally, I want a sun. And it's kind of a cool thing. You don't even have to mask. So this, there, okay, are y'all sitting down? There is no fussy cutting. Yes, a Mary Detheridge Stamps and Lingers card with no fussy cutting anywhere. I know. Mark the day. Okay, so what I've done is I've got the little round shape from the stamp set, and I'm inking it up with So Saffron. And I want my son right there, so I'm just going to stamp him there. And because the So Saffron is pale, you really can't even tell that I didn't uh, stamp that first, right? Parfait! It's parfait! Thank you, Lenny. All right, and the final thing we're going to do is I'm going to add the word thanks. It's a little tiny stamp. Little tiny. We're going to do him in uh, Always Artichoke. And let's see, we're going to put him right there, like that. All right. Now, before we put the cutout sentiment, let's go ahead and mat this up. And I'm going to use liquid glue just because it's a little easier. I'm not real good at putting fast fuse on round stuff. I don't know about you guys, but I'm not very good at it. All right, so we'll just center that up. 
and then we'll do the same make sure it's centered that's the other reason to use fat, uh, liquid glue because you can wiggle it a little bit and then we're going to put it on a scalloped oval hi robbie glad you could join Hey, Karen. Yeah, don't be so-so about this set. I, I promise you want it. It's so cool because you can turn the colors around and all of a sudden, bing, bada, boom, you've got a winter scene or a lake scene or a Hawaiian ocean scene. It's just, it's so versatile. All right. There we go. There's that. All right. We'll pull our card front back. And I'm going to make the ribbon treatment with some 5 8 inch burlap ribbon. And all I'm going to do, this is very technical, very artsy, is I'm going to swag uh, length. And then I'm going to find some scissors. There they are. And we'll just cut that. And I can trim it down to size later. I'm just going to do that like that. I'm going to use some glue dots to adhere this to the card front. I'll put one at the end and then just first I'm going to tear off my paper like so. Hi Karen, thank you ma'am, I appreciate it. I was very happy with how this one turned out. <laughs> And I'm not even patting myself on the back. Every once in a while, even a blind squirrel finds a nut, you guys. And this was a nut for me. I was happy. All right. So we're going to just put that on like so. You don't really want a lot of, like, angle, but you want a little. And you can play with those glue dots a little bit, like so. There. Now, as you can see, that needs another little glue dot. I love me some glue dots. All right, there we go. Now, I'm gonna trim that up just a little, like that. And then I'm gonna pop the sentiment, or the art piece over the top with some dimensionals. And then we'll add the paste is the resistance. Well, there's a couple of pieces de resistance. Okay. Now, one thing you're going to see me do on this card that I don't normally do is I'm going to put the card front on the card first. And part of that is because I kind of want to be able to use it to be sure. Let me check something here. Give that a little push, like a so. Now, before you joined me, thank you, Susan. I appreciate it. Hey, Neoka, welcome. Glad you are glad you made it. Before you all arrived, I used the lovely words thinlets. You remember these guys? They're from the annual catalog. And when you cut them out, remember, it doesn't cut out the word it makes a negative. So in order to use this for a card, you have to, oh, I said there was no fussy cutting. Gosh, are you ready? Okay, I'm going to fussy cut this. I'm sorry, I lied. I lied a little bit. There. All right, and then we'll cut that out like so. And boom, I have a gold sentiment that I can adhere to the front of my card with some liquid glue. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, Robbie, I appreciate that. I think it's hard to screw up when you're using this stamp set and the Wood Textures DSP, because it kind of rocks. And together, they are perfect, I think. All right, so we'll just put that on there, like so. Okay, now I have a true gentleman button. Another cool, cool thing. 
and I'm going to use a glue dot to adhere it right next to the sentiment, like so. And then we're going to make a bow, and I'm going to use, yes, even you can do that, Robbie. I think even, even Amy can do it. <laughs> All right, so I could have used linen thread to make my bow, but I wanted the slightly larger texture. So what I did is I just cut a length of the burlap ribbon and I pulled out two pieces. Y'all knew you could do this, I'm sure. Two pieces of the, the twine, essentially, that makes that ribbon into ribbon. Just pulling out just like of that. And then I have two pieces of it, so I'm just going to make a double bow, a double length bow, like this. Just a lack of that. Okay, there we go. Make it kind of pretty. Get it kind of purtified. We'll purtify it there just a little bit. All right, there we go. And then I'm going to take another glue dot, and I'm going to scrunch it up a little bit so that it's smaller in size. I'm going to stick it right in the middle of my true gentleman button. Stay. And then I will stick the bow, the bow, to that uh, right there, like so. I do not know why I'm using a Pink Panther Inspector Glusso accent. I do not know. And then we'll cut that off. Okay. All right. You guys ready for the magic? Are you ready for the magic? Let me re revert your attention back to our previously made card front. Okay. Four and a quarter by 11. Score and fold at five and a half as usual. And then again at eight and three eighths of an inch down the long side. Okay. And then score them or fold them essentially like that. Now lay it flat like a card front because like it is a card front. And then you're just going to take your liquid glue and put it along the edges of, of the bottom of the flap, okay? So you'll see I don't have any on the top. No glue on the top, okay? And then, thank you, Karen, I'm glad. Okay, and then you're going to, then you're going to wipe that off because you just screwed it up, okay? And I will show you what I did wrong. You guys know what I did wrong? I may just make another piece. Because that's kind of going to annoy me. Hang tight, people. See what happens? You see where pride goeth? Right before a fall. All right. I'm going to make me another, another card front. Just one second. Pull back the score, simply scored. Those of you who came in late, you'll get to see it live. Yes, uh, okay, unmurmur, I'm back. All right, so four and a quarter by 11. At five and a half, you're gonna score just like it was a regular old card front. Okay, and then at eight and three eighths, like that. Okay. Give it a little rub, a little rub like that. And then we're gonna fold it again. All right, and now what I did the last time was I went too far out. Remember, you've made your mat to look like a regular card front, right? So if you bring glue clear out here, you kind of got a mess which is exactly what I did. So I'm gonna, un I'm gonna not do that this time. How about that? So just keep it inside where your mat's gonna be. There we go. Like, more like that, less like I had, more like this. Don't be like me, just do it like this the first time. All right, okay. 
Now, just want to get it lined up just like it was the card front. So just eyeballing that you've got equal margins around the entire card. Give it a good burnish. Yes, ma'am, Pat, this is in the um, occasions catalog. It's called Waterfront. And it's kind of towards the back and it's kind of all by itself. <laughs> this is how, how much a creature of habit I am. I'm sitting here rubbing up here. There's nothing to rub. All the rubbing is down here. So watch, ready? Here we go. <laughs> One each easel, right? Now all we gotta do is make the innards and we'll be ready to rock and roll. All right, so let's set that aside. Pull some of our other parts out. I'll set that away. Okay, so here are the pieces to the easel stop. And here are the pieces to the inner liner. Hey, Karen. Thank you. Well, there's no point in getting all head up, right? Tis what it is. So, little known fact. We all mess up. It's a true thing. Not even kidding. You heard it here first. Possibly second. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is this is going to end up being a stack like so. Okay? And for this one, I kind of know where my inner... My... Uh, easel stop is going to be but when you're making one you can go ahead and do kind of a dry fit okay like this so that you put your easel stop in the correct spot um, but with the measurements I'm giving you if you if you use the same size for your easel stop that I've used then you can just kind of eyeball it to be up Oh, about a quarter of an inch. Okay. So watch how you dry fit it. I just set it like that, and then I hold it and pick the easel up and set it like so, so that I can see that my, my proportions are correct and that the easel isn't laying down too far or sitting way up like that. I want it to be a nice medium. I want it to be just right, Goldilocks. Okay. So that's about where it's gonna go, and that's fine. So let's pick this up. And before I mat everything up, I'm going to do a little double timing. Let's see how that looks. All right, so let me, I'll show you the inner liner here in just a second so you can see where we're headed with this. You can see what I did, the, the double timing I'm talking about is I stamped across the margin of the easel stop and the inner liner with my trees. So let us do that a Dan. Let's do it a Dan. Hey Fran, thank you. I'm so glad that you, uh, you joined. All right, hope that it's worth it. Okay, so here's my trees again, and I'm using Old Olive. And I'm just holding down the easel stop panel. I'm going to line that up like that and give it a good press. And then I'm going to do a cardinal sin that I always say don't do. I'm rocking that stamp just a little bit so that I get so that I get ink all over my easel stop. See, gotta be careful. Gotta be careful. Mary wasn't careful. So let me see, I think we're going to, we can flip this. We can make this work, hang tight people. We can make this work. Okay, now guess what I don't have to do this time? That's right, I don't have to rock it because I've already got my trunks. So just line that up, give it a stamp, hold it, hold it, put it back. <laughs> This is what we call in my family the perversity of an inanimate object. Okay, line that back up, rock it back just a little bit. There we go. So it's a little blurry tree. All right, it looks like I, I can see it when I don't have glasses. Hi, Jean. What were you wondering? I'm sorry, do you do anything to cover the cutouts on the back of the front part of the card? Um, a 
doesn't show. So I, I guess you're asking if I had um, cut my mat from there. Um, it doesn't show. So I got, I got lucky. But um, yeah, you know, that's actually a very good point. That was bad. That was a bad pre-planning. So um, in this case, I got lucky. But maybe for this kind of a card, you would want to use the mat for the inner liner right? Because you could never see that. Good point, Sue. Good call. Good call. All right. All right. So I'm going to put, I'm going to just get that aside now and I'll pull out our sentiment from Waterfront on the one I'm making now. Did I screw that up? Oh, I did. Golly. You're right. So all I'd really have to do Gosh, I'm, I'm just screwing this up by the numbers, aren't I, you guys? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. So I could cut a piece that's two and three quarters by four of um, old, of always artichoke, and just use some liquid glue to put on there to cover that up. Because, yeah, maybe nobody would look, but I will now wake up at two in the morning worrying about that showing. So, yeah, I'll cover that up. Gosh, Mary. Y'all don't leave me. I'm not usually quite so stupid. All right, so we got our little stamp set, our little sentiment from the waterfront stamp set. And I'm going to stamp it in always artichoke. Real life stamping. Thank you, Mary. I planned that completely. I planned it completely. That's what I meant to do, yeah. Okay. And let's uh, go ahead. See, a good teacher does teach what not to do. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. And we'll just kind of center that up a little bit, like that. Hold it a beat, hold it a beat. Huh. And that'll be okay. That will be fine. All right. So we'll go ahead and mat this up. Matting it up with my festing fuse. Okay, and again, we're double matting on so saffron and always artichoke, like that. Okay, all right. Oh, I forgot my check mark there. Oh, thank you, Ginger. That's right, Mary. You will certainly remember that because I told you. I showed it to you. I showed you. All right. We'll give that a little mat like that. And somewhere around here is my... Here we go. Okay. Okay. Now we'll set that aside for a second, and our final thing is to create a second scene. Scene two, take one. Like that. All right, so we're gonna recreate our um, mountainy scene there. And once again, I will start with some always artichoke. Oh, Jean, you're so sweet. Uh, no, Julie, <laughs> you do not want me on a pedestal. That's a horrible thing. That would be bad. All right, so here's my ground, and I'm going to ink it up with my old artichoke. And we're going to put it that's about where the sentiment's going to go. Like so. So we'll put the ground right about there. Okay. And then we'll do some mountains in crumb cake. Mountains in crumb cake. You're very sweet, Jean. 
very sweet and very patient with my goofiness, which is currently attempting to find my mountains. Oh, mountains, where did you go? Mountains. There you are. Here's the mountains. And we're inking it up in crumb cake again. just line up the bottom of the mountain with the top of the ground. One of my animals is snoring to beat the band. I think it's Leo the kitty. I think it's Leo the kitty. And then we're going to put another one right about there kind of nestle that into that gap in the ground like so and then how about some more trees I know Julie you are exactly correct it's like one second it's here and then gone just flat gone I'm gonna do some trees in old olive is this not the coolest image I I love it. You know how I am about pine stuff, and so this is like totally in my wheelhouse right here. We'll put some trees there. And we'll put some trees there. Like that. And I'm still not putting my stamp sets away because we're still gonna decorate an envelope. And now we're gonna put in our So Saffron Sun little earlier in the day so it's up a little higher like that all right and that looks like my scene scene did you guys know that Atlanta is like did you know that Atlanta is where Marvel's movies are being filmed hello I think I need to quit my other job and go work at the movie studio that's like 10 minutes from the house. And maybe, I don't know, I don't know who I could meet. I could meet somebody important or really, really cute. Like, well, you know, Chris Evans, Captain America would be okay. Robert Downey Jr. would be okay. What am I, 16? Good Lord. And then we'll put it on a second mat, which is always artichoke. Hey, you guys, there is only one month, actually less than a month left in celebration. So if you're trying to get celebration goodies, you need to get after it. And if you are considering joining up, you need to get after it. This is the perfect time to do it, okay? So if you have any questions about being a demonstrator, I would be so happy to help you out with that. And you can get your free stamp sets and all of your other free goodies. All right, so let's go ahead and put this inside our card. And then last but not least, we will pop our easel stop. I'm not sure if that's really what it's called, but that's what I'm calling it. Okay, just like normal, line this right up. So, and then let's find our dimensionals that are right here, and I'm going to put this on there. And once again, as usual, I'm going to be pretty generous. I'd be a great actress, Hugh Jackman, yes, Spider-Man, Robert Downey Jr. Mm -hmm. I was watching The Avengers the other day, I think that's like time 706. But I love the scene. Y'all know this scene where Thor says, if you took away the suit, what would you be? And Robert Downey Jr. goes, millionaire, billionaire, philanthropist, genius. <laughs> yeah, that's so funny. I love him. He's so funny. Okay, sorry. All right, here we go. Here we go. Now I know you're all thinking, God, that's really weird. She's 
putting something on dimensionals inside the card. Yes, it's true. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But if you'll recall, there's only a simple layer here. So it's not too terribly thick. The thing that makes this a thick card is the buttons. So yeah, absolutely positively, this one is gonna take some extra in the postage. Hey Angie, glad you could join us. All right, so we're gonna put this and we're gonna kind of use the tree trunks to tell us where to be. And just kind of get it straight like so. Oof. All right, now I'm gonna put one more button. One more button with another glue dot. All right. We're gonna set it right about there. And then I'm gonna pull one more piece, one more strand out of my burlap ribbon and tie a single strand bow. Like that. This one may have to have a redo, maybe not. All right, that'll be good enough, I think. Pull that down. All righty, and then one more glue dot. Yep, this one was a lot of glue dots. Kind of squish it up, put it right there in the middle of the button, the middle of the button, and stick Mr. Bow right there like that. And there you have it, one each easel card. What do you think? Cool? All right, let's do a quick envelope, shall we? And here it is, here's our envelope. And all we're gonna do is I'm just gonna use the um, ground and the trees in the sun, because that's all I want on the front little ground again with some always artichoke. Some old olive trees. Thank you, ladies. I appreciate it. I'm going to put that down and act like I'm not silly. Put some old olive trees. So I'm gonna. Nope, that's it. That is it right there. That's all I'm gonna do. I'm only gonna do those two little stands. Stephanie, if your husband tells you to buy a stamp set, I believe it is your moral obligation as a good and dutiful wife. Those are the only times you'll ever hear me say those words. You need to do this for him. It's for him. Otherwise, you know. Thank you, Karen. Thanks, Kathy. Appreciate it. Thank you, Fran. And the sun. And that is the end of the stamping. So we'll pull out one more piece of Wood Textures DSP. And fortunately, we're covering up that ink mess I just made. Goodness. I'm a bit of a hot mess today. Okay. Give it a good rub. Hey, Donna. Glad you could make it. Thank you, Julie. I'm hoping it... Thank you. I'm glad it lived up to your expectation. I was, I was thinking that the wood textures and the pine trees would pique your interest this morning. And I'm glad that the reality worked out. And I even showed you how to not do some things. So it's like a bonus lesson. No additional charge. There we go. So these are really easy. The cool thing about, the best thing about this, one of the very first ones that I made was for a friend of mine who needed a card for his wife. And I wish you could have heard the carrying on 
in the office when I took it to him. You would have thought I had made something that took approximately seven and a half hours. And as you can see, it's uh, quarter to nine. It only took 45 minutes, and that includes screwing it up. So there you go. All right. I surely do a pre... You missed the bonus lesson, but if you'll go back and <laughs> watch Donna, you'll get to see it. I actually included several bonus lessons. Here, I'll give you a hint. There's what we we're talking about, and you'll know when you get to it in the replay. But yes, I will be fixing that before it goes out of my home. You'll see the original Donna did not have that problem. Right? Okay. All right, ladies, I'm going to sign off and let you finish your Sunday. I hope you all have a wonderful work week and that I will see you right back here next, next week. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.